Jesus is God, Jesus is Lord, Jesus has the victory. We all have a call, a call to greatness, a desire for it. We want to do something good. Now is your time. You could change the world, and the world needs changing. So get busy. Shalom World, God's own channel. give an entire conference here one day just on just beginning to scratch the surface of what the announcement of the kingdom is about. The whole of the New Testament is a, is a description inspired by the Holy Spirit to announce what the announcement of the kingdom is. Because the kingdom is something that comes from God. The children of this earth cannot build it. Oh, we think we can. We will build our paradise. We will build our Tower of Babel. We will be able to make the world finally perfect. How many thousands of years is it going to take us to realize we can't do that? Two things that I think if you really want to get a sense of the kingdom of God, you've got to go to the parables of Jesus because they're the, they're the most... Las maneras más suaves para entender el reino. It's, it's a, es un cuento, no? And the good thing about Jesus is he's the perfect teacher. Well, he's God, he ought to be, but he's the perfect teacher. And a good teacher knows how to tell a good story that helps you get into, ah. I think the great parable of the kingdom of God is the, is the prodigal son. Meditate that frequently. Because he's talking about the kingdom, the house of the father donde los dos hermanos por fin se pueden reconciliar. The house of the father where the two brothers can finally be reconciled. Este pobre ciego que estaba ahí al lado de la, a la, del camino, this, this, the blind guy who was on the side of the road, He is a figure of the man, the woman, the child, the person who doesn't fit anywhere. No Pharisee invited him to his house to have dinner. They invited Jesus. Jesus went. Nobody invited him. Nobody talked to him. Maybe they gave him a coin, but they gave him a coin so they wouldn't have to look at him. La atención de Jesús a los pobres, a los ciegos, a los leprosos, a los endemoniados, all of his attention to the people who had no place, they had no, they didn't fit. We don't get the gospel of the kingdom if we don't get how much time Jesus spent with the people who didn't fit anywhere. You remember, those of us who are old enough, not to get distracted, you remember every year, the only, the only Christmas special I watch every year is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, you know? No. Why? Because, because I always sympathize with the land of the misfit toys. They didn't fit anywhere. The broken arms, the strings didn't fit, whatever it was, no? Jesus, because, and going back to the parable of the the prodigal son in the casa de mi padre a espacio para los que el mundo ha rechazado that's the announcement of the kingdom the church has authority and the greatest expression of her authority is not the fact that she can tell us what to do when to fast when not to fast although she can do that so pay attention to those things the church has authority because God, in Christ, gave it to her to bind and to loose. What you bind in, on earth shall be bound in heaven. It's, it's, the church has a certain, because she is, she is a part of Christ, she is his body. Now, why do I mention this? Because one of the most solemn things the church does, has ever done in her history,
you're gonna, this might surprise you, is to publish the missile that indicates the Mass that is said every day of the year, except for Good Friday, because we don't say Mass on Good Friday. It's the only day. But the calendar is set. The prayers are prescribed. The ritual is described. It's with the solemn authority of the Church. And as every Pope that I can remember in my lifetime has been saying to the priests, stop fiddling with it. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the Church. And you do, you celebrate the mystery as it has been left to us by those before us. There's a solemnity to the act of promulgating the missile. The church has done it over centuries. My point is that this is an act because the church is Christ's body and she acts in his name. And what she approves in a solemn way, he acquiesces to, to put it that way. Why do I say that? Because that means the readings of the day and the sacrifice severed celebrated every day is a solemn act of the church and it is an act of Christ. And so, what, where, where's he going with this? It's this simple. In terms of Jesus coming into our life, participating in us, the readings of the day, the prayers of the day, and the sacrifice is the way Jesus continues to be passing by. And we can say, what did Jesus say to me today? Just as sure as he was passing by. And, and the way to answer that question, the first way to say is what was the gospel of the day? Because that gospel was chosen by solemn act of the church. Esa es la palabra del Señor a la iglesia ese día. Now, I think it's a good thing to meditate on the scriptures and, and, and to read and, and, you know, you can flip pages all you want. But all I'm saying is that there's a certain special solemnity to the word that is inscribed in the liturgy that day. So one of my practices, which, which is it's all connected to the liturgy, no tiene cierta solemnidad. I always encourage people, read the gospel of the day the night before or in the morning. And then later in the afternoon, ask yourself, close your eyes and say, see if you can remember, it's a little, what did the Lord say to me today? And that's a way of asking yourself, what was the gospel today? Y ahí empieza el diálogo. Señor, because he's passing by. And the liturgy is the way he does it. Now, if you, can, if you can go to Mass every day, that's great. Most people can't because of work or whatever else, but at least read the readings. And maybe if you have a missal, say the prayers. Porque es la palabra del Señor a la iglesia ese día. He's still, he's still plopping himself in our living room. He's still saying, deal with me. And all he wants is pay enough attention so that you could respond. Evangelio del día, con toda la solemnidad de la iglesia promulgando el misal, es la palabra del Señor a la iglesia ese día. Y si uno no puede ir para la misa todos los días, está bien, pero por lo menos debe uno de leer, de, yo digo, para nuestro bien, debe uno de leer el Evangelio del día en el misal o en el internet o donde quiera y leer las oraciones. Otherwise, we're not engaging him. We're just letting him walk by. Not que ve conmigo. And then we have the audacity to say to the Lord, how come you don't talk to me? How long have you been with me and still you do not understand? Este que me causó risa ¿no? durante la misa del nuncio, ¿no? He was preaching, the nuncio was preaching, and he says, ¡Ay! Jesús con sus discípulos decía, ¡Ay! Ustedes no entienden nada. No, you remember he said that? You people don't understand. He's talking to his disciples. You don't understand anything. But it's okay, because we don't get how he's passing by. It's his initiative. That's why I went into that little digression about the solemnity of the promulgation of the missile. 
It's an act of the church. And maybe you like the old missile better than the new one. Not que ver. La iglesia acepta los dos, but the solemn act of the church is in the current missile. And you can use the readings from the other missile if you prefer, because the church has never abrogated that. All right, I'm going to move a little bit quicker here, porque ya está pasando el tiempo, ¿no? Porque el Señor está pasando, porque Él pasa con miedo por medio del tiempo también, ¿no? On Sunday, we do something that we don't do except on high solemnities, no? Rezamos el credo. You know, I, I, I really wish that we would have, I really want to encourage this. Sometimes I think we, 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 we as, as, as members of the church, we don't get what the, why the creed is said on Sunday. Oh, well, here we are. We're all looking up at the screen. Porque todas las iglesias tienen pantallas, no? We're all looking up the screen because we can never remember the translation. I can't even remember the translation, so I'm looking up at the screen. I believe, it's like we're all reading and I believe. I say, well, this is an old formula from the fourth century and it's part of it's something that the Pope just decided we have to keep saying. You know what it is? Después de haber escuchado el Evangelio, es la respuesta de la fe de la iglesia. It's after you've heard the gospel, he said something to us, we have to respond to him, you see, because it's, he passes by, we respond. He responds, he, we respond. Okay, it's our turn. The most important beginning of the creed, I believe. Now, how many times... In the gospel, do the, do the sick and the blind, when Jesus looks at them and he says, do you believe? And he says, and they say, I believe. Es la expresión de la fe, y sin eso no hay nada. Es la expresión de la fe. La iglesia tiene que dar su respuesta. Bueno, viene por medio de la gracia. El Señor nos ha dicho algo, hay que responderle. Yo creo en Dios Todopoderoso. Now the creed, we could do a whole conference on the creed. Oh, we've got three or four years of conferences going here now, ahead of us. Is the Father, what is the faith of the church, no? I believe in God the Father, I believe in God the Son, I believe in God the Holy Spirit, and that's everything. Everything we believe is in that. Because salvation is the Trinity coming into our world. El Padre manda al Hijo, el Hijo manda al Espíritu Santo con el Padre. The Father sends the Son. And the Son gives us the Spirit. And we, it's like a ladder. God drops a ladder from heaven. El Padre manda al Hijo. Y el Hijo junto con el Padre manda el Espíritu Santo. The ladder drops. It's a ladder by which Jesus comes into the world because he came into the world by the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's the ladder by which we back, ascend back to where he is, no? Because how do we get back to God? Exactly the mirror by the Holy Spirit we united to Christ, who takes us to the Father. It's not rocket science, we just sometimes don't get it. Por eso la profesión de la fe de la Iglesia en la Santísima Trinidad es el resumen de toda la enseñanza del Evangelio. The creed is the full sort of summary of everything that is taught in the Gospel because Jesus talked about his Father and he promised us the Spirit. That's the faith of the Church. If you find anybody preaching to you anything other than the Most Holy Trinity, one God and three persons, do not listen to them. Porque no es la fe de la iglesia. Respuesta. Back and forth, back and forth. So I'm hoping we're getting the sense that the, the liturgy is our chance to have that physical engagement with the Lord. Now, I'm not encouraging the priest to go spit and poke your eye, but I am encouraging that you realize that when Jesus does that in the gospel, he's doing it to us. Don't you see? Yes, but the people, they look like trees. We need to work on that. That's why you treat them so bad. It is essentially a, a traditional Catholic understanding that everything Jesus taught by word and by deed, the spit, the ears, the writing on the ground, the parables, Most, most scholars realize the Lord publicly preached for three years. And then, as St. John says, and then the hour had come. Three years of preaching, 
three days for the Paschal Mystery. Three hours on the cross. Fulton Sheen used to talk about this, no? Everything that happens in the three days of the Triduum, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday, everything that happens is the sudden, sudden showing of everything he talked about. Because at a certain point, the Lord God knew I could only talk so much because people only understand so much when you talk to them, no? I have to show them what the kingdom is about. It kind of crystallizes. It's when you finally see, it's the ray, it's like when you, on a dark night, on a dark night and there's a thunderstorm approaching and you, you just say, well, I just don't see any stars, but I don't know that there's a storm because it's dark. And all of a sudden a streak of lightning comes across and you see everything. And you, you get it. Ooh, I better get inside. Or like Dorothy, let's go, Dorothy, under the, hmm, under the, you know, Dorothy, there you are. The passion is the immediate showing to us of everything the kingdom is about. So if you ever read something that Jesus teaches and don't understand it, ask yourself how it's related to the passion, death and resurrection of the Lord, because that's the crystallization of everything. He shows us in those three days everything he had been talking about. And so you see, we're human beings, and we usually don't get things just through a lecture, which is why you're not going to remember much of what I say, but that's okay. That's okay. Because you're going to actually, the only way it's really going to se capta, no, is if, you, is if you read the gospel in the context of the life of Christ himself and the life of the saints. Because the life of the saints are the commentary in the gospel that really impact us. Because you've got to see it. You've got to see it. Oh. Oh, that's what that's about. The disciples didn't even understand it until they saw it. Well, my point is that that's why after the creed, we begin the offertory because now we have heard and we have responded. Now we must see. That's why the sacrifice that is offered daily at Mass is the Lord making present again the ultimate gift of himself on the cross and the passion, the death, and the resurrection. And so you can ask yourself two questions every day. What did the Lord say to me today? And the answer is, is related in some way, at least one of the ways you can approach that question is in the gospel of the day. And then you can ask yourself, what did the Lord do for me today? Yeah, we ask that, no, well, what, Jesus, what have you done for me lately, no? He has offered us the sacrifice in our midst. And maybe we didn't get to mass, but he offered it in your parish church or he offered it in the cathedral. Christ offered himself. So the answer to the question is, what did Jesus do for me today? Si ofreció en la cruz, hoy. today because the mystery of the mass is what all of that that the Lord Jesus did in, in the preaching of the gospel and the announcement of the kingdom and the offering of the sacrifice which reconciles heaven and earth is is sacramentally it's not a different reality it's the same reality plopped in your living room what did Jesus do for me today si ofreció como lo hace todos los días It's such a gift to be a Catholic, no? Porque en, la, en el misterio del sacramento, no? The mystery of the sacramental life of the church, time, time is different, no? When the church promulgates a missal, she affects, I believe this, she affects time. That's her authority, which she has by Christ. She affects time. And what was 2,000 years ago is not 2,000 years ago, it is right now. And what John and Peter and the others heard and saw was not 2,000 years ago, it's right now. And it's you, and it's me, and it's Mary. Porque la Virgen siempre está con nosotros, no? It's now. Y por eso el punto principal es que el Señor desea participar en lo nuestro primero. Y nuestra participación es una respuesta a 
a eso. You see? So the sacrifice. So that's the question every day. What did the Lord say to me today? Open the missile. What did the Lord do for me today? He gave himself. Today. Each time we sort of enter more deeply into what's actually happening here, he enters deeply into us and we are invited to enter deeply back into him. Cosas tan sencillas. No, when I was a little kid, and I hope I'm sure many of you have this memory, when I was a little kid, we would drive, this is in Corpus Christi, you know, and we live far away from the church, you no, know, because the church that my parents were married in, was, was Our Lady of Perpetual Help, que quedaba muy lejos. But sometimes we would get in a little car, my aunt would drive us because she was the only one who drove, and we go into the, and we go from where we lived, which is out in the middle of nowhere, and we would drive into town, que quedaba muy lejos, vamos para el centro, which is a scary thing, no, for us, no. Porque en Corpus, pues ten cuidado con el centro. Así nos hacían, ¿no? Así nos hacían. But you know, we'd pass in front of the church. Pero si no te hacen, hijo. Make the sound of the cross. Si, mamá. Padre, hijo, Espíritu Santo. Why? Porque el Señor está físicamente presente ahí. Because the Lord is truly physically present there. And don't just pass by como que si nada. As if nothing. Make the sign of the cross. Oh, how I love the grandmothers who still do that to their grandkids. Presidente hijo. Por medio de ella se transmite la fe. That's how the faith is transmitted. Make the sign of the cross. Why? Because you're passing in front of the church. Y el Señor está ahí, no? The presence of the Eucharistic Christ, obviously in the sacrifice, but in the tabernacle, is the continued physical presence of the Lord in the world. It is the same Christ, and we had the same opportunity either to respond to him or to ignore or pretend he's not there. Y la salvación para un católico consiste en la respuesta a la presencia del Señor. The response of a Catholic is what, 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 what determines our salvation. And we can pretend he's not there. And you know, so you walk in front of the church. I'm not talking, look, the Lord is not offended. And no, 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 Zita, he doesn't need us. We need him. And the only way we can enter into that, engage him, is first of all, physically acknowledge he's there. And that's not just when you walk into the church. It's when you're passing by, you're driving by. You know, tenemos muchas iglesias muy bonitas aquí. Algunas ni tan bonitas, pero ahí vamos. We have, but they're beautiful. They're all beautiful. Why? Because the Lord is present. So you're driving by. You're driving by Sorrows. You're driving by St. Pius X. You're driving by, by San Martin de Porres. Even on the freeway. Porque el Señor. Don't ignore him. You see, we spiritualize. Jesus is everywhere. We see. Okay, it's yours. God is everywhere. That's true. But God became flesh for a reason. That is to say, when I'm actually in your neighborhood, acknowledge it. How many times in the gospel and Jesus was passed into the neighborhood of? The Gerasenes. So well, there's a story for you. My point is, everything the disciples had in the mystery of the incarnation of the Lord presenting himself and them responding to him, we have. I'm not sure either. <laughs> we have it. And it's always back on us. ¿Y qué respuesta le vamos a dar? And what response will we give him? Many people saw Jesus passing by, but never responded to him. Many people were at, near the cross. Some of them had faith and wept, and some of them. That's the way of the world. Así es el mundo, ¿no? Crucifican a los buenos. ¿Qué vamos a hacer? That's my... That's why in the liturgy, the reading of the word, it's a real word. It's his word. And maybe you say, you know, I didn't get anything out of Father's sermon. 
I'd have sympathy for that if you could tell me after the Mass what the Gospel was. Porque el primer sermón viene directamente del Señor y de ese Evangelio. We're not all great preachers, but the Lord is a perfect one. So at least, you know, try to remember, carry that word with you. You see, it's about carrying it with you here and here. And, and the physical presence of the Lord. Hay que apreciar esto, no? We really have to appreciate the physicality of it. The Eucharist is here for a reason. I am here. Will you respond to that? I often remember, I often think about the prodigal son. It's a powerful, for all the elements of the kingdom, if you really deeply meditate it. But you know, people ask me sometimes, well, why did the, why did the son who ran away, why did he have to like say he was sorry to his father? Which is the same question as, why do I have to go to confession? Why do I have to say I'm sorry? Can I just, I say, well, in your house, if somebody had offended you and went away and spent all your money and all of a sudden, five years later, he comes back and just says, pops himself in the living and says, hi, Dad. Wouldn't you feel like, uh, you're going to say something? <laughs> When's dinner? Uh, something's happened here, so can we at least like acknowledge the reality? Otherwise, there's no relation. Es un juego. You have to acknowledge the reality, no? And that's why reconciliation is always a part of this. Por eso, no? Anyway, in describing briefly some of the ways by which the Lord first initiates and how we respond, I'm kind of hoping that this kind of overview of the liturgy, the sacred liturgy, the Mass especially, kind of helps us to realize that, that participation is actually something very simple. It always has been. It's acknowledging who is speaking to us, and it's responding to him. And it's acknowledging who is present to us, and it's responding to him. And it's trying to carry that reality with you, whether you're physically at the church or somewhere else. And that is the beginning of the kingdom of God. And we should always, I think, begin and end every day with a thanksgiving to God, see, for the sheer grace of it all. Because he didn't have to do it. But he did. And, but this is the point of all of my talk today, he does. He didn't just do it then, he does it now. And to be truly Catholic in this understanding of liturgy is to recognize it is now. Y busca la respuesta. A Cristo crucificado. Hay que dar la respuesta. One of, the rich, one of the rubrics of the church is that there must be a crucifix in every sanctuary, somewhere near the altar. Because it's it's the, it's the, it's, it's the bolt of lightning. Al Dios crucificado, al Hijo del Hombre, a nuestro hermano rechazado, en Cristo hay que responderle. To be Catholic is to realize <laughs> it's not enough just to believe. That's a different theology and it's not ours. We must respond because the response is love. And love is what saves. No? Charity. El Señor nos amó y desea respuesta de amor. En eso consiste, como dice Santo Tomás, toda la salvación. The Lord has loved us and he asks for a response in love. And in this, as St. Thomas says, consists the fullness of salvation. It's not complicated. It's now. And it's a gift. God bless you.
I'm Bishop Daniel Flores from the Diocese of Brownsville. It's my pleasure to greet all of our viewers, Shalom World TV. I pray that the programming that Shalom offers is a help to your faith, hope, and love. May God continue to bless you through the prayers of the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph, that your faith might lead you to a deeper, more intimate knowledge of the goodness of God in your life. May God bless and protect you always, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shalom World, God's own channel.